Hello there. In this video, we are going to discuss a few types of adjusting entries, particularly deferrals and accruals. First, we are going to try to understand what deferred revenue and expenses are, along with accrued revenue and expenses. And then we are going to look at certain examples where these adjusting entries could be used. Let's start with a very basic example. We have a seller and a buyer at the seller sells a product for $100 to the buyer. Okay, we are going to consider three different scenarios depending on when the cash is being paid. Let's consider the simplest of the scenarios first, where the cash is paid right when the product is delivered to the buyer. So when the seller sells the product to the buyer, the buyer pays cash for that immediately. Okay, so the cash account for the seller is being debited $100 and because the seller has delivered the product to the buyer, the seller has earned a revenue of $100 and hence you credit the revenue account with $100. Looking at the same transaction from the buyer's perspective, the buyer has paid cash of $100 to the seller and hence the cash account is being credited $100. The buyer has also received the product from the seller and hence would debit an expense account by a hundred dollars okay so these would be the journal entries for the seller and the buyer if the cash is paid right when the product has been delivered now let's consider a scenario where the buyer pays an advance in order to buy the product so the seller receives the cash but this time in advance hence the cash is being debited by a hundred dollars the seller has not delivered the product to the buyer yet and hence the revenue hasn't been earned yet. The seller has promised to deliver the product in the future and hence has collected the cash from the buyer. So the seller has to record a liability in the form of unearned revenue. The unearned revenue account is a liability because the seller has to deliver the product to the buyer in the future. Unearned revenue is also known as deferred revenue. The word deferred in English means postponed, right? Even though cash has been collected today, revenue has been postponed to a future date when the product will be delivered. And hence, it's known as deferred revenue. Looking at the same transaction from the buyer's perspective, the buyer has paid cash already, and hence the cash account will be credited by $100. The buyer has already paid for a product which he will receive in the future and hence will record an asset in the form of prepaid expenses. Okay, Why is prepaid expenses an asset? Because it brings benefit to the buyer in the future. Okay, The buyer has paid cash for something which will benefit him in the future. The expense hasn't been incurred yet but rather it has been postponed to the future and when the seller delivers the product to the buyer the expense will be incurred then okay now let's consider on a future date when the seller actually delivers the product to the buyer what journal entry should the seller record on that particular day so now the seller actually earns his revenue okay so now we can record a revenue of hundred dollars because the product has been delivered to the buyer okay but the unearned revenue which we recorded on the earlier date for a hundred dollars has to be reversed because the seller no longer has any unearned revenue so the unearned revenue account is going to be debited by a hundred dollars so technically we are just reversing the journal entry in the unearned revenue account which was made at the earlier date now looking at the transaction from the buyer's perspective the buyer has to record an expense of a hundred dollars because now the product has been delivered the seller has delivered the product to the buyer and hence the buyer has to record an expense of a hundred dollars the buyer no longer has a prepaid expense of a hundred dollars and hence that transaction has to be reversed okay so prepaid expenses will be credited by a hundred dollars now if you compare these journal entries with the journal entries from the previous scenario you can see that effectively 
they're all the same okay if you look here cash was debited and revenue was credited cash is being debited here and revenue is credited here unearned revenue whatever was credited earlier has been debited in the future step and that cancel each other out the same with prepaid expenses here okay so here you see the expense account being debited and cash being credited so if you put these all together you see that the journal entry effectively is the same so once all is said and done cash has been paid and the product has been delivered the journal entries effectively have to be the same let's look at some practical examples where deferred revenue or expenses might be used when we think of scenarios where cash is being paid in advance for example rent payments are made in advance or when you subscribe for a particular service you typically pay in advance let's consider a subscription service like youtube premium or spotify and let's assume you the user are paying and subscribing for one year in advance okay. so let's try to look at the journal entries both from the perspective of the user and also from the service provider so google which is the service provider of youtube premium is the seller or the service provider and the buyer would be the user who is subscribing for this service let's assume that the annual subscription service costs a hundred and twenty dollars and let's say the user subscribes to this service on the first of july so google would debit its cash account for hundred and twenty dollars on this particular day because the user has paid a cash of 120 okay but the revenue hasn't been earned yet so google would record an unearned revenue of 120 dollars okay so it would credit 120 dollars to its unearned revenue account okay the user having paid cash of 120 would credit cash of 120 dollars okay and would debit prepaid expenses of $120 okay so now let's fast forward to the end of the year okay so now we are on the 31st of December and Google has to close its books for that particular year so considering this scenario where it has received cash of $120 for a service it would provide for 12 months as of 31st December, six months have passed since this service has been subscribed for. Okay, so Google has earned its revenue for six months out of those 12 months. So Google would show an adjusting entry that a revenue of $60 has been earned. It's no longer unearned, but has been earned. And from its unearned revenue account, it would debit $60 this adjusting entry has to be made on the 31st of December before Google closes its books for that particular year because by making this adjusting entry Google is able to state its financial statements in a more accurate way that describes the situation as of the 31st of December if the user also has to close his books on the 31st of December then he would record an expense of $60 or would debit $60 and would credit prepaid expenses of $60 because now that would describe more accurately the situation as of the end of the year and it goes without saying that on the following year on the 30th of June the same journal entry would be made to show that the remaining $60 has also been earned now let's move on to the last scenario where the seller has delivered the product to the buyer but the buyer promises to pay cash at a future date okay so when the seller delivers the product to the buyer okay he earns a revenue of $100 because the product has been delivered okay but cash is yet to be collected now the seller has an account receivable of a $100 account receivable is an asset which is being debited it shows that the seller would receive this hundred dollars at a future date looking at the same from the buyer's perspective the buyer would record an expense because the product has been delivered so an expense account would be debited a hundred dollars and the buyer would have an account payable of a hundred dollars okay 
But later, when the buyer pays cash to the seller, the seller would record on its cash account a debit of $100. And he would also remove the $100 of account receivable. So he would credit account receivable by $100. Okay, So it's basically reversing the journal entry made when the product was delivered. And the buyer, now having paid cash, would credit cash by $100 okay, and would reverse the account payable because he no longer owes any money. So he would debit the account payable account by $100. Account receivable is an asset because it brings a future benefit to the seller. As in the seller will receive a cash of $100 in the future. On the other hand, account payable is a liability because the buyer has to pay $100 in the future to the seller and hence it's a liability. Now let's look at a practical example where this scenario could be encountered. Okay. Let's consider the seller is a bank and the buyer is interested in a loan from the bank. Let's keep the same dates as before. Let's say the bank provides the loan on the 1st of July. Okay. So on the 1st of July, the bank provides a loan of let's say $100 to the borrower and hence would credit its cash account by $100. Okay. The bank would also register a note receivable of $100. Okay. Note receivable is an asset and hence it's being debited. It's an asset because when the loan matures, the bank would get back this $100. Looking at it from the borrower's perspective, the borrower receives cash of $100 and hence would debit the cash account by $100. Okay, And the borrower now has a note payable of $100. Okay? Note payable is a liability because when the loan matures, the borrower has to return this $100. Now let's assume that the interest rate on this loan is 10% and the loan is for one year. So as per the loan agreement, on the 30th of June in the following year, the borrower has to return the money to the bank. But as in the previous case, if the bank has to close its books on the 31st of December, okay, in order to create its financial statements, okay, let's look at what adjusting entry the bank should make to more accurately reflect the situation as of the end of the year. So as of the 31st of December, the borrower is not obliged to pay any interest yet. Okay, The borrower only has to pay on the 30th of June an interest of 10%. Okay. So as of the 31st of December, we can say that the bank has earned an interest for six months but hasn't received this in the form of cash yet. So we can say that the bank has earned an interest revenue. Okay. So six months have passed, 10% on the $100 is $10, okay? But only half a year has passed, okay? So the bank has earned an interest revenue of just $5, okay? But this revenue has not been collected yet, but will be paid only on the 30th of June in the following year. So this becomes a receivable. So the bank would record an interest receivable of $5 on the 31st of December. The borrower would debit an interest expense account of $5, okay, and would show that there is an interest payable of $5 as of the 31st of December if he has to close his books on that particular day. So to summarize, even though the loan is for a period of one year, with each passing day, the bank starts earning its interest, okay. And when it has to close its books at the end of the year to show its balance sheet or income statement, okay, by doing an adjusting entry, the bank can more accurately reflect the situation as of that particular day. So the bank can show that out of the $10 of interest which is expected, $5 has been earned so far. Or in other words, we can say that the bank is accumulating its interest revenue with each passing day and by the end of the year it has accumulated an interest revenue of $5. The term accrued means accumulated. Okay, 
So in this case, we can say that the bank accumulates or accrues its interest revenue day by day, but only gets paid at the end of the year. Okay, or in this case, on the 30th of June in the following year. On the other hand, the borrower starts accumulating an interest payable with each passing day, but only has to pay after one year has passed. And hence, that adjusting entry is known as accrued expense. So let's try to summarize the four terms we've learned so far. Deferred revenue is when you collect cash in advance, but you are going to provide the service for this later. Deferred expense is when you pay the cash in advance, but you receive the service at a future point. Accrued revenue is when you start providing the service, but you will receive your cash payment at a future point in time. Accrued expense is when you start receiving the service, but you're going to pay cash for it only in a future point in time. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.